do that esophageal sphincter muscle, you inject it. Silicon. Oh, bad idea. Yes, it was. It's now off the market. Indirect, same thing, but let's do it submucosal, not within the muscle itself. Oh, bad idea. What are you doing? You just basically, and six months later, you're injecting these little pellets of silicon. Six months later, they're all gone. They've all migrated out and gone somewhere else, you know? And I'm not even sure what the idea was, you know? What are you trying to do? Make it smaller opening? All right, Indosent is still around. Uh, you know, nobody, I, I don't know anybody, any of my colleagues who do it anymore. The idea was basically almost like a plication, but right there, kind of pinch it up and try to narrow that. And uh, here's one that's really been sticking around is Stretto. This is the plicator. This is that, um, that tip I was telling you about. But here's Stretto. What, do you put a ball valve in there? No. <laughs> Let's take something and measure it out and then put a little ball that emits radio frequencies and zap you. Damage. Scar tissue. Oh, if you produce what doesn't kill you will only make you stronger, right? Yes! Wow. Scar tissue in the lower esophageal sphincter. Let's make sure it never works again. Let's make sure it never opens again or closes again. And yet, it's been 10 years and it's still here. So, I'm not trying to take away from it. There have been some good reports about it. However, let me tell you how we used to use in residency uh, radio frequency. Uh, Blake liver tumors, kill them, right? Jeez, why do you want to kill normal tissue? I'm just not sure. So, in summary, and this is it, no more words, no more pictures, except I have a video at the end about how the surgery's done. I don't like stuff like that here. But, in the end, it had a, started out with good reputation, it fell to the wayside of medical management and the claim that it was failed is now reemerged. The studies have been done, it shows it's a viable treatment for patients who have failed medical management, who don't want to be on medical management, who have complications from gastroesophageal reflux like Barrett's esophagus or peptic stricture and all that. And we look at the long-term data, yes, can have failures, usually most of them occur after two years. There are a variety of reasons <coughs> you can have failures. But most of these people can be repaired and we'll call it a redo disinflammation or will pay you does every patient who goes back on a PPI, is that considered a failure within uh, you know forty percent within ten years? No. You reduce the amount of medication they're having to take. Basically trying to take a little opportunity to give them some comfort and give them their lives. Now, before I go to the video, any questions? I have one. Yes. What do you know about the a placement of a magnetic sphincter? Have you read uh, literature on that? What do you know? <laughs> Is anyone uh, doing this it. around it's, here? It's been a while. Yeah. Um, I haven't read it. I haven't read it. It just reminds me of the old days when MIT came up with this. They had um, some articles recently, like this 2013. They had The Lancet published an article about it. You know, it, it, you always try to learn from history. Yeah. And I remember MIT came up with two magnets that you would put in uh, infants who were born with esophageal atresia, and let the magnets pull themselves together and grow that together. Big failure. That was a big failure. So, uh, I haven't read enough about it, but my, first of all, my first thought is my brain goes back mm -hmm. to yeah. why The research they've done, but it's been fairly small studies, fairly yeah. low number of subjects have been shown. Positive, but it's such a small number, is the thing. Maybe best way yeah. to see what the data is. I mean, look, we're talking Absolutely. about 10 years of strato. Yeah. And I'm like, uh, I'm really scared of it, I'll be honest with you. Yes? What, what percentage of patients with dyspepsia symptoms are actually good candidates for this as opposed to not doing it because that's not their problem? Uh, you know, I never got a good sense as to what it was. You know, I just, um, and I think it varies from, from place to place about how much workup is done beforehand. But I think the lesson from there that you bring up, and I don't know the percentage, I'm sorry, but the lesson is that if the patient is complaining about it and you give them medical management and they're still complaining about it as soon as they started, it's probably something else. It really is. Now, you can't have reflux with bile, and that's something I didn't bring up. You can't have reflux with bile. You can't have symptoms with bile. Now that's why you always go and see if when you do pH studies, 24 hours, they're going to look when bile comes up because the pH is going to be hot, it's going to be basic. And if that correlates with their symptoms, then these patients are indeed candidates for lapinescence from there. 
Now, we think, oh, bile is no big deal. No, that's not true. One of the bile acids produced is a, is a known carcinogen. We think that might be related to colon cancer, although we're not 100% sure about that. So it's something you've got to keep in mind. Any other questions? All right, you ready for a video? Let's see if we can get it to work. I'm going to narrate it. This is the start. It's a short video. All right. Now, what we're doing here is we're, get, we're isolating the fundus right here. That's the diaphragm up there with all the blood vessels. That's the fundus he's pulling. These are the short gastric vessels. He's clipping them. They go straight to the spleen. You can kind of see the spleen hiding up over there a little bit. And we're going to clip them and divide them. With, they used, he used a harmonic scalpel uh, in this one and divide those. Remember, yeah, there's the spleen hiding over there. So, yes, you can get an injury. Now we're going to the patient's right side, and we're dividing the gastrohepatic ligament, but you've got to be careful because you can get an aberrant right hepatic artery running up through there. And um, so he's, he's being careful, and he's going to be careful. Also, there's some nerves right through there. He's taking down the ligament. He's going to be exposing the right crua. This is the muscle of the diaphragm where the esophagus goes down. And he's also taking down the um, uh, phrenoesophageal uh, ligament uh, from there, and uh, this is where he's taking on the ligament. He's going to expose the right crua here in just a minute, and then he's going to tighten that up with stitches. And we're going to do something else. We're going to actually put an absorbable patch on there. Here we are dissecting some more down through there, going into the um, greater sac. Yeah, please go into the greater sac, opening that up from there. Yes. You can see the liver up here, it's being retracted out of the way. Here we are, the patient's bleeding to death. No, I'm just kidding. It's eventually stopped. Yes, <laughs> give it enough time. All right. So he is, um, although it's not the best picture in the world, he is what he's trying to do is get in there and expose that crew, and he's going to show you he is going to then put a stitch in it, uh, the right one going over the left, and close that down. And you can actually see the, the esophagus. There's the esophagus right up there. So there we go. Now we're getting the muscle expand. And we're getting it opened up. Yay. We're all feeling good about it. And you see how? There we go. He's getting ready. Now we got, we got into that sack there. And it's still cauterizing around a little bit. Yeah, we're still getting everything separated up. But anyway, just pertinent anatomy. There's the esophagus. There's the stomach over here. Now we're putting the stitch in. Oh, remember this one? Auto suture. Yay! So he's putting a stitch in there to close the, um, there's the two lens of the muscles. There's the left and there's the right. He's closing that crew down. And all that to try to keep that from uh, the uh, fundification. Now he's got the fundus. He's freed it up. He's pulling it behind the esophagus. See that? Nice. Look at that. Yeah, that's good. And he's wrapping it around there. So he's got no... T See, and that's bougie. There we go. Anesthesia's up there putting the bougie down. Do we have bougies, by the way? Yeah. Yay. Uh -huh. All right. So, so now he's getting his auto suture stitching device, and he's going to put non-absorbable zero stitches in there. And he takes a bite there. Now he's going to go up and take a bite of the esophagus. Not all the way through. Just get part of the muscular layer, just try to hold in that first stitch, you go to get a piece of the esophagus. You come over here, you get that other fundus right there. You kind of measure out about 15 centimeters, and that's, that's the end right there, and he's going to put a stitch in there. The bougie is to keep you from making it too tight. You can put the bougie down when you close the uh, crua um, of the uh, esophageal hiatus or diaphragmatic hiatus. And now he's tying. You guys might remember this. Oh, there's Dr. Branch tying the stitch. There we go. There we go. Here we go. See, he's doing that, you know, laparoscopic uh, stitch tying from there. And now we are finished. So oh, I've got a few more to put in, sorry. And he's going to show you at the end here how it looks. It's almost over where he's done. Very beautiful job. We've got now. Now you don't stop the suture of the esophagus. Oh, you know what he's doing right now? I know what he's doing. <coughs> he's going to sit, stitch it to the muscle. The fundus to the uh, muscle, the crua, mm -hmm. so it tries not to slip back up into the thoracic cavity. All right? Try to give you some more support to let everything heal. Now, we're going to put a patch back here. We're, and the, the video's done. And we're going to Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> the video's done. And that's the end.
that kid, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Real simple, right? Get ready. We're taking the whole day to do it. Until <laughs> we all get it down. Marco's going to be helping out. Anesthesia, so we've got to move bougies down and then nasal gastric tubes at the end of it and they have to spatially stand the patient up on the seat. Yeah, it's, it's steep, it's steep uh, reverse trip down. So, uh, patients in lithotomy, <coughs> surgeons in the middle, assistant surgeons on his right or on the patient's left, and the assistants on the right. They have a liver retractor, five ports. Okay, any questions? Is it lag in the stirrup or the sodomy? I'm sorry? Is it, is it lag in the stirrup or yeah. lithotomy? lithotomy? Mm -hmm. Why is that? I just uh, I need to stand somewhere. I've in tried it without. Oh, I've you mean the, oh, because you're in the Yeah, we okay. need three people. I've tried it without. It does work. It just takes longer. So, so um, learn from experience. All right. Okay. All right. Any other questions? All right. Thank you guys for Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.